All right, we are still continuing with uh, comparing decimals, and we're gonna be using models and the number line today to compare decimal numbers, and then use our greater than, less than, and equal to symbols when we are writing out our comparisons. All right, so quickly some fluency. We're gonna rewrite each of these as a fraction that as a mixed number and then as a improper fraction. So starting with five, remember how we say this, five and two tenths. Don't say 5.2, that doesn't help you when it comes to fractions. Five and two tenths. So when we write that as a mixed number, you've got your five and then your two tenths here. And then when we write it as an improper fraction, remember this equals 52 tenths. If you combine your five and your two and make them all into tenths, that gives you 52 tenths, okay? We're doing the same thing here with nine and six tenths. As a mixed number, you would write nine and six tenths. Combine your nine and your six into all tenths, and we would have 96 tenths for this one. All right, I'm gonna give you a few seconds to do this one on your own. Okay, you should have done 10 and 6 tenths, and when we do it as an improper fraction, you have 116, or sorry, not 116, 106 tenths. Okay, take a second and do this one. Seventy-eight and nine tenths, you would write as seventy-eight and nine tenths. And when you write it as an improper fraction, you have seven hundred eighty-nine tenths. All right, let's look at the next slide. This time, we're writing them just as mixed numbers. So exactly what we were just doing. You say them in your technical terms. It makes it really easy. So we've got three and one tenth here. So as a mixed number, you would write three and one tenth. Okay, nine and eight tenths here. Again, write it as exactly how you say it, nine and eight tenths. Okay, take a second and do these next two problems. I'll give you about 20 seconds. Okay, so for this one, you should have done 10 and 4 tenths. So you're 10 and 4 tenths like this, and then 64 and 3 tenths like this. All right, next. Let's look at our application problem. In science class, Emily's one liter beaker contains 3 tenths of a liter of water. So we've got Emily's beaker contains three tenths of a liter. Allie's beaker contains eight tenths of a liter of water. And Katie's beaker contains 63 hundredths of a liter of water. So then we've got Katie's with 63 hundredths of a liter. Who can pour all of her water into Emily's beaker without going over one liter? Allie or Katie? All right, so let's take a look at this. So we've got Emily's beaker here, contains three tenths of a liter. We have Allie's beaker, which contains eight tenths of a liter. And we have Katie's beaker that contains 63 hundredths of a liter. So what it's asking is, which one of these two girls, Allie or Katie, can combine their liter of water with Emily's three-tenths of a liter of water and not go over one liter. Not go over one liter. Pause the video and take a second and see if you can figure this out. All 
Okay, so if I add Emily and Allie, remember when we add decimals, we line them up by the decimal point. So when I add them, 3 plus A equals 11. So I put my 1 down, carry my 1. Decimal point comes straight down, then 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1. So that would equal 1.1 liters, sorry. Okay, now if I combine Emily and Katie, again, line them up by their decimal points. I can fill in my empty spots with zeros. And when I add them up, we get 93 hundredths of a liter. So which one is less than a liter? Because we don't want to go over a liter. Which one is less than a liter? That would be Katie and Emily's. So Katie can pour her water into Emily's beaker. is less than one, one and one tenth is greater than one. So Katie could fill hers in on Emily's beaker. All right, here we go. So you're gonna have these templates on your Google Classroom that you can open up in Nikami and use them, okay? So when we are shading these in, for example, it says shade in 15 hundredths on your area model template. Okay, well, so this would be, how, let's count how many spots there are here, how many columns. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten columns. So each of these is equal to one tenth, because this would be one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, Six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths, nine tenths, ten tenths, which is the same thing as one whole. So if I'm shading in fifteen hundredths, that would be one full column. But how can I show five, the five hundredths part? Well, I can take my tenths here and break it into ten parts. not perfect, but that'll do. And then shade in five of those. So that would be five hundredths that I've shaded in. So that would be 15 hundredths. So this one equals my 15 hundredths. Okay. Next it says shade 51 hundredths on another area model template. So on this one, I'm going to shade in 51 hundredths. Well, that's going to be five whole tenths. So one, two, three, four, five, and then I need to shade in one hundredths. So that means that I need to break that next column up into 10 parts, just like I did over here. I'm gonna use different color this time. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm gonna shade one of these. Get my lid off. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to shade one of those. All right, so this equals my five tenths. This equals my one hundredth. So that's going to equal my fifty one hundredths. All right, so looking at them, which one's greater? Can you, looking at the two models, which one has more shaded in? Fifteen hundredths or fifty one hundredths? Well, obviously, 51 hundredths has more shaded in. It's got five full columns shaded in. It has more than half of my entire area model shaded in. This only has one full column and half of another. Okay, so 51 hundredths is greater than 15 hundredths based on how we look at our models there. So we could say 15 hundredths is less than 51 hundredths. Is there another way to record it? Well, yeah, we could put 51 hundredths first. So we could say 51 hundredths is greater than 15 hundredths, okay? 
Now we're going to repeat with some others. We're going to do 37 hundredths and 3 tenths. All right, so on 37 hundredths, I'm going to fill in three whole columns to represent my tenths place. And then I'm going to break it into my next column. I'm going to break it into 10 parts to represent my hundredths place. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, I kind of messed up. Let me fix this a little bit. One, two, three, four, six, seven. There, close enough. It's not perfect. It'll do though. All right, but then I've got seven of those. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've got my three, my three tenths and my seven hundredths to make 37 hundredths. Okay, next one, three tenths. So that's just three full columns here. That's my three tenths. I don't have any hundredths, so I don't need to break up my next column. I just need my three full columns. So when I look at them, they both have three full columns, but this one has seven hundredths. It has part of the next column. So that means that there's more shaded in here than there is here. So if I write it out, I'm going to say 37 hundredths is greater than three tenths. Okay, now, in the past, when we've compared decimals, what do we do? We line them up by the decimal point. So if I line up 0 0.37 like this and 0 0.3 like this, I can fill in a zero there. Then we compare from left to right. Well, they both have zeros in the ones. They both have three in the tenths. So we have to look at the hundredths place. Seven is greater than zero. So that means that 37 hundredths is greater than 3 tenths. Okay, let's do 27 hundredths and 7 tenths. Next. Okay, so I'm going to shade in 27. So that means that I have 2 tenths, so 2 full columns here. 1 two and then I'm going to break this next one up and I'm going to shade in seven of those parts so one two three four five six seven so there's my 27 hundredths okay then seven tenths there's no hundredths, so that just means that I'm shading in seven of my columns. Okay, well look, which one has more shaded in? This one only has two full columns and then part of a third. This one has seven full columns shaded in. So obviously my 7 tenths is going to be greater than my 27 hundredths. Don't let this fool you. The fact that it has more numbers has nothing to do with which one's greater. And again, if we line them up by their decimal points, 27 hundredths here, 7 tenths here, I can fill that in with a zero. Compare from left to right. If I look at my tenths place, 7 is greater than 2. So if I keep it in this order, I can say 27 hundredths is less than 7 tenths. Okay, now let's look at the last one, 7 tenths and 70 hundredths. Well, we already know 7 tenths, we did it over here just a minute ago, is just 7 full columns. There's my seven tenths. What about 70 hundredths? Again, if I look at my tenths place, I've got seven there. Sorry, I'm trying to hurry. Okay, and then zero in the hundredths. So since I don't have, it's still zero, I don't have to fill anything in. 
So that means that they are equal. They are equal to each other. Seven tenths is equal to 70 hundredths. Remember, you can add as many zeros as you want after that number, and it's not gonna change the value. So the fact that this has a zero here does not make it any bigger than this number here. I can even get rid of that number. That zero doesn't change the value. It means the exact same thing. Okay, let's move on to the next slide now. This time we're gonna be using a number line. Okay, on the number line, it says label the endpoints. Four and three tenths, and four and six tenths. Okie doke. Okay, it says label the other tenths so we can that we can label on the number line. So if I have four and three tenths, I need four and four tenths, four and five tenths, and then I get to four and six tenths. So I'm gonna label four and four tenths and four and five tenths. There we go. Okay, next. Says plot four and fifty hundredths and four and thirty-eight hundredths on your number line. So we're gonna do something similar to what we did on the area models. All right, so I'm gonna look at my tenths place. That means that my number is going to be at least this big. Okay, so four and 50 hundredths means it's going to at least be four and five tenths. Okay, now notice it has a zero after it. Can I get rid of that zero? I absolutely can and it doesn't change the value. So my four and five tenths is actually the same thing as four and 50 hundredths. That zero does not change value at all. But look at this one, four and 38 hundredths. Well, I know it's gonna be at least four and three tenths, but I need it to be eight places after that. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna break this up into 10 parts also. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's 10 parts. So my four and 38 hundredths, this would be four and 31, 4 and 32, 4 and 33, 4 and 34, 4 and 35, 36, 37, 4 and 38 hundredths is going to go right there. Okay, so now we're going to compare the two by looking at them on the number line. Which decimal is greater? Well, 4 and 50 hundredths is greater than 4 and 38 hundredths because it's further along on the number line. So if I were to write it as A number sentence, a comparison. We've got four and 50 hundredths is greater than four and 38 hundredths. Now we're gonna practice with a few more. Okay, so we've got six and 37 hundredths and we're comparing it to six and three tenths. Well, I can make this in six and three tenths and then I can make this in six and four tenths, because if I look at my tenths places, neither of them go all the way up to four, okay? So that means that they're both gonna stay in between the six and three tenths and six and four tenths. So I'm gonna break this into 10 more parts. One, two, three, four. All right, then I'm gonna count over seven of these places, because this would be six and three tenths, or 30 hundredths, this would be 31 hundredths, 32 hundredths, 33 hundredths, 34 hundredths, 35 hundredths, 36 hundredths, 37 hundredths is right there. Six and three tenths is way back here. So I can say six and 37 hundredths is greater than six and three tenths. All right, now two and 68 hundredths and two and eight tenths. Well, if I look at my tenths place, my lowest can be two and six tenths, and my highest can be two and eight tenths. Well, what comes between two and six tenths and two and eight tenths, halfway between them? Two and seven tenths. So now I need to find my two and 68 hundredths. So I'm gonna break up these two into 10 more parts. One, two, three, four. 
And then I'm going to count over. Here's 60 hundred, 60 one hundred, 60 two hundred, 63 hundred, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68 hundreds is right there. Okay. Then my two and eight tenths is way down here. So obviously two and 68 hundredths is less than two and eight tenths. All right, let's do 10 and one tenth and 10 and 10 hundredths. Well, if I just look at my tenths place there, they're both 10 and one tenth, aren't they? Can't I get rid of this zero and make them the exact same number? I absolutely can. So these two are actually equal. I forgot to put my, I accidentally erased my signs here. Okay, 10 and 2 tenths and 10 and 2 hundredths. Looking at my tenths place, I've got a 2 here and a 0 here. So I need to start down here at 10.0. Then since I don't go any higher than the 2, I can make this 10 and 2 tenths. Okay, so then halfway between 10 and point zero, or 10 and 0 tenths and 10 and 2 tenths is going to be 10 and 1 tenth, right there. Okay, so now to put 2 and 10 and 2 tenths, it's going to go right here at the very end. That's where my 10 and 2 tenths is going to go. Now my 10 and 2 hundredths, though, is going to have to come somewhere between 10 and 0 hundredths and 10 and Ten hundredths. So I'm going to break this up into ten parts. One, two, three. Okay, then I'm going to count over. Here's one hundredth, two hundredths. I'm going to put it right there. There's my ten and two hundredths. So look at my number line. Ten and two tenths is way down there. Ten and two hundredths is way back over here. So that means ten and two tenths is less than ten and two hundredths. Now, you can use the area model strategy, you can use the number line strategy, or you can line them up by the decimal points like we've been doing in the past, okay? Make sure, oh, we still have one more. I forgot about this one. Okay, this one, we're gonna go kind of fast. This is gonna be our other method, lining them up by the decimal points, okay? So I'm gonna line them up, six and 24 hundredths, five and 24 hundredths, Starting in the ones place, I already have a difference. Six is greater than five, which means six and 24 hundredths is greater than five and 24 hundredths. Next one, I'm gonna keep going kind of fast. 13 and 24 hundredths and 13 and 42 hundredths. So when I line them up by the decimal points and I go from left to right, go to where they're different, well, two is less than four in my tenths place, which means that 13 and 24 hundredths is less than 13 and 42 hundredths. I'm gonna move this over here. All right, 48 hundredths and two and one tenth. So I line them up by their decimal points. I can fill in zeros there. I already have a difference here in the ones place. Zero is less than two, which means 48 hundredths is less than two and one tenth. Markers again. <clears throat> two and seventeen hundredths compared to two and seven tenths. And remember, you can fill in your empty spots with zeros. Starting in the tens place or the ones place. Sorry, they are the same there, but we go to the tens place. One is less than seven, so that means that two and seventeen hundredths is less than two and seven tenths. Okay, next one. We've got three and three tenths compared to three and 30 hundredths. So when I fill in my empty spot with a zero, look what happens. I have the exact same number. I don't even need to go and compare because I know they're equal. Next, seven and nine tenths compared to seven and nine hundredths. I'm gonna fill in my empty spot with a zero. Start on the left. They both have a seven in the ones. Go to the tenths place. Nine is greater than zero. So that means that seven and nine tenths is greater than seven and nine hundredths. Next one. Eight and two hundredths 
compare to eight and two tenths. So we gotta think about how would I write this as a decimal? Remember it's two tenths. Well, how would you write two tenths as a decimal? You would make it 0.2. So this would be the same thing as 8.2, 8 and 2 tenths. All right, so, oops, I wrote that wrong. 8 and 2 hundredths, and then I'm comparing it to 8 and 2 tenths. Fill that in with the zero. Starting at the ones, there they are the same. So then I'm gonna move to my tenths. Zero is less than two. So that means that eight and two hundredths is less than eight and two tenths. Okay, five and three tenths compared to five ones and three hundredths. So we gotta think about how would we write five ones and three hundredths as a decimal? Well, we would put a five in the ones place and means decimal point. So I'm gonna put my decimal point there. So now I focus on the three hundredths. How many places after the decimal point is my hundredths place? Two, two places after the decimal point. So that means I gotta fill in with a zero in the tenths and a three in the hundredths. Now I can compare them. I'm gonna put my five and three tenths on top since it's my first number. I'm gonna fill in my empty spot here with zero, then I'm gonna start from left to right. Fives are the same. I get to my tenths place, three is greater than zero. So five and three tenths is greater than five ones and three hundredths. Okay, five and two tenths compared to 52 tenths. What would 52 tenths be as a decimal? 5.2, five and two tenths. So what do you notice about those two numbers? They are equal. Okay. Four ones and six tenths compared to four ones and sixty hundredths. Well, let's write these as decimals. If I have four ones, that's a four in the ones place, and means decimal point, then six tenths, how many places after the decimal point is the tenths? One. So that would be four and six tenths. Now let's do this one. Four ones, so four in the ones place, and means decimal point, 60 hundredths. Hundredths means it needs to end in the second spot. Well, since I have two numbers, that makes it easy. I just do this. Okay, so when I go to write them up and down, four and six tenths, four and 60 hundredths, and I fill in my empty spot with a zero there, what happens? I create the same number. 4 and 60 hundredths, 4 and 60 hundredths, so these two numbers are equal. Okay, 2 and 31 hundredths and 23 tenths. Start here. How would I write 23 tenths as a decimal? We've done this many, 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 many times. It would be 2 and 3 tenths. So now I'm going to go and write them up and down, two and 31 hundredths, two and three tenths. I'm gonna fill that in with a zero. So I'm gonna start from left to right. Ones are the same, tenths are the same. Look at my hundredths place. One is greater than zero, so that means two and 31 hundredths is greater than 23 tenths. That is my last one. All right, so next video, I'm gonna go over a couple of your problem set pro problems for you to work on and complete and then make sure you turn it in when you are finished.